Mexico here. Hey, so I recorded a video uh, a couple days ago uh, for you guys, and I was really, really, you know, not impressed, but uh, I was really happy with it. Like the content was really, really good, and it was funny, and it was everything kind of that I wanted to do in the video and talk about. And then it came time to throw it in, uh, in editing, and I don't know, I just, I didn't have the motivation to put it up. I just, maybe in a future video, I'll, I'll throw it in, but I wanted to talk to you guys about something that's a little deep, something that hits a little true to home, and it's something that I don't really see a lot of people talking about, and I don't know why it's not more of, you know, a concern for, for our nation, and that's depression. So I've been struggling with depression for fuck as long as I can remember and this past week has been really really unkind to me and I just I don't know I've been lacking the motivation and I don't know it's just something's not right and for for a long time you know with the help of my wife she's been helping me through a lot of my a lot of my issues a lot of my problems but it's like I can't escape it it's like a fucking prison and it, it's that, that feeling of like hopelessness and it's just like a restless feeling that you can't shake. You know, when I was growing up, there, there'd be times where I'd be out doing shit and, you know, hanging out with friends and I mean, it, it just, it, it was nice to be out, to be around friends. It felt good, but it always felt like there was just something missing, just something not right. Like I couldn't grasp that actual happiness and joy of, of doing something. And then I got to junior high and I started skateboarding and, and that was good because that gave me an outlet. It took my mind off of it, right? So, you know, I'm skating, I'm, you know, <laughs> hanging out with friends and it, it takes the edge off, right? It's like, it's like taking a, a, a Vicodin or a Norco when you're in a lot of pain. It, but when you're in a substantial amount of pain, it only fucking curbs that little bit. I mean, the pain is still there that, you know, it's not, it's not a 100% fix because it's not, it's not a resolution. And that, that's how it felt. Like all these things that I enjoy doing, all these things that I'm like, that I really care about doing, I just, I can't, I can't be fucking happy about it. And it's super frustrating because I want to be, I don't want to be that way anymore. And like I said, you know, my wife has helped me through a lot of my issues, but oh, I just, I can't shake that feeling. It's just Wednesday afternoon just was like fucking horrible. Like I couldn't, I couldn't be happy. I couldn't enjoy anything. And then you spend the majority of your day trying to pinpoint or, or figure out what the fuck is wrong and why you're feeling this way and it's just a fucking shitty feeling and you can't get rid of it. And it's scary when you think about it because depression is one of the hardest things to pinpoint. With me growing up, I was really good about hiding all that. I was really good about shutting that part of myself off and not letting anyone know how deeply internally fucked up I was and the thoughts that I was having. So it goes, it goes unlooked. No one like, I mean, there were people who knew. I mean, obviously like, you know, my best friends and I think my parents had an inkling, but you never truly know what someone's mind state is and I think that's the hardest part is because you can't just like look at someone and be like oh shit they're they're depressed or they have really bad anxiety or in my case I have really bad social anxiety like I consider myself to be an introvert because I can be around friends and fake it and I can be out in a, like a social setting and, and be okay but internally I'm fucking dying like I I don't know what it is like it, it makes me panic it makes me cagey and I uh, it's so bad and I I wish I wasn't like this I wish I, I had an on and off switch that I can just say up oh, this this emotion on or nope this emotion off but it's not that simple and like I said I've had it since I was young I've been battling this battle for 20 fucking years man like, just even saying it makes me want to break up a little bit. And it, it, it kind of sucks because 
you don't want to be in that mindset for that long <laughs> because it, it be, starts becoming hopeless right like you start feeling like it, it's a never-ending battle that things won't get better i've gone to therapists i've you know talked to people uh and it, it's not something i'm proud of but I, i've tried hurting myself multiple times because that and I, I think it was more of just the escape of it, trying to, seeing how it would feel, bringing myself to that point of so much hurt and so much pain, to more or less see how, how in, into it I was, not into it, but how deeply fucking hurt I was. Like, did I, was I hurt enough to want to hurt myself enough to just end it all and say, you know what, that's it, I'm fucking done, I'm out. And obviously, it was never it was never the case you know i i i want to live i i love my friends i love my family more than anything i love my wife i i want to have a family you know and that's that's not how i want to be but i mean in the in the gist of it i, I was looking up statistics and uh 1.3% of our fucking population has a, you know, has some kind of depression issue or some kind of anxiety issue, post-traumatic stress. 1.3 of our population. Do you know how many fucking people we have in the United States? That's 3.3 billion people. Jesus. And, and 60% is untreated. Oh, wait, no. 60% is treated. So that means there's 40%... Of, of that 1.3% not getting treated. I mean, I've tried everything in my power to get treated, but it every attempt I make just doesn't seem to really hit the fucking target. Like, every attempt is just like a, a therapy session, and then I don't feel like anything is really working. I don't feel that it's doing what it should be doing, and I fucking panic, and I just, later, I'm out. And I, I think that's a case for a lot of people. And I mean, I've had countless, countless friends, you know, end their lives. And it's one of the most painful fucking things, man, to, to lose a friend, to lose people you care about because no one was able to look at them and say, dude, who fucking hurt you? Like, let's figure this shit out. I'm fucking here, I'm standing behind you, you know? And that's, that's such a hard thing because there's no coming back from that. I can't tell my friends, hey, it's going to be fucking okay. I didn't know. I wish I would have known. But they're gone, you know, and that's, and that's like the worst part of it, right? Is you can't go back to that. So I guess more of what, I guess my goal is I think I want to do something. I want to start something. There was a there was a nonprofit organization that got me through a lot of hard times. Uh, it's to write love on her arms, and I'll post it right there, or right there, or right there. And they they do really good things. They help kids out. They they use music and and art to be the enticing point to say, hey, you're fucking beautiful. You're a fucking good person. You have something to live for. You know, it's not worth it to to throw that all away. You know, you have family and friends and they, they really did help me through some fucking shit, man. And I'm forever grateful for that. But I think, I think a lot of the problem too is how uneducated we are and how, how much we're not educating our kids and, and young adults that there, there's resources out there. There's people who, who don't even know you that give a shit and they, they truly care about you. You know, I wish I would have known about that. It wasn't until in my adult life, you know, I was like 22, 23 when I found out about that. And like I started looking into it and, and started looking at it for what it was and I was like, holy shit, there's like people just reaching out that don't even know you that are like, you know what, look up, things are, things will be better before you know it. And it, it was such a, almost 
relief because it it really felt like um fucking biker because he was in the middle of the fucking road in front of fucking two cops. <laughs> Oops. That makes me feel a little better. Ah. Sorry guys. I don't normally try to run people off the fucking road, but I mean, my channel ain't, my channel name is Psycho on the Street and uh it, look at this fucking idiot. can't drive today but I mean long story short guys is I, I really want to do something I want to get information out there I don't want it to be just for you know our kids I don't want it to just be for young adults I want it to be for everyone who's out there suffering from the same shit that I fucking have been going through same shit that a lot of you might have been going through and tell you that there is fucking hope an amazing family I have a god I love my fucking wife she's helped me through so much shit and I don't know I don't I really didn't know how much longer I was gonna be able to do it for to be honest like that's how hopeless it felt is I just I didn't see an end of the light and I was giving up faster than I was willing to accept any kind of help right so I don't know I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing ideas on, on things that I can do. I mean, obviously there's charities, obviously there's organizations out there, but I do want to get involved. I want to be do something better. I want to help people because I know. <laughs> Just breathe. <laughs> it's something that's really important to me. And being on my motorcycle today, I mean, it helps. And like I said, it, it's just, it takes the edge off, right? Like it, that sting doesn't sting quite as much. So I just, there's something we have to be able to do. How many, how many more lives need to be lost because, because there's, there's no end for it. Like they don't see a light at the end of the tunnel like I, I was able to. And, you know, I know a lot of people who suffer from depression who were able to pull themselves out of it as well because they did have that um, that backing, that support from their family, but not everyone's that lucky, and the ones that aren't that lucky are the ones that aren't here with us anymore. There, There's a song that I'm gonna post at the end of this video. Fuck copyrights, I don't give a fuck because this is something that's important to me. YouTube, go fuck yourself. Just kidding, don't go fuck yourself. This is a great outlet, but I might cut that part out. <laughs> There's a video that I want to post for you guys that, that means a lot to me and it's from a band called Famous Last Words and this song really hits home for me. Um, I just, uh, I want you guys to help me create something that helps people out there. Maybe it's you, maybe it's your brother, your sister, maybe it's your mom or your dad. But let's all collectively get together and do something about this. Let's make a change for the good. Let's start educating our kids at a young age that if you're depressed, if you're sad, if there's something that's bothering you or you don't feel right, what can we do to fix it? A lot of times we're too late in that process and they're already, you know, you know, adolescents or teenagers or young adults and they've already progressed to that point where it's just, it's so hard for them to crawl back up that they just feel nothing, it's not going to do anything. And, and that's where we need to start the change is we need to get them as soon as we know that it's an issue when they're young, when they're, you know, when they're kids. And the trickiest part of that is that we, you can never know. It's one of the most hardest things to target. So, I mean, that's really all I have for you guys today. Sorry this is such a downer video, but it's something that's really important to me. And especially because it's something that I fucking suffer with and something that I struggle with every day. But I, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. If you guys like the content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel if you think uh, this is something you want to watch in the future. I appreciate you watching, guys. I'll see you guys on episode number four. Peace.
a couple days after he died, there was a memorial service held for him. What I saw was incredible. The parking lot was so packed with cars that some of these cars had to park on the grass. And when I went inside, I only could make it a couple of feet. At that moment, I thought to myself, wow, if he could just be here right now, see all of these people who loved him and supported him and see how not alone he really was, would he have still done it? The stories told, the truth unfolds Try to remember my darling souls Look deep into the eyes of the soul that sits across the room And start to recognize their face, they'll start to recognize yours too Reunited friends and family your souls have gathered here A second chance is your gift, my friends We know you mustn't fear Cause this is not the end